Hello, everyone, and welcome to Heads Up, the weekly webcast and podcast of the National Headache Foundation. I'm Dr. Lindsay Weitzel, migraine strategist, founder of the Facebook group Migraine Nation, and chronic daily migraine survivor. I am here today with Dr. Amelia Barrett. Hello, Dr. Barrett. How are you today? Hi there. Thanks. Happy to be here. <laughs> Thanks for being here with us. Dr. Barrett is a board-certified neurologist and the creator of the Migraine Relief Code, which is an online course for the holistic treatment of migraine. And she is here today because our topic is supplements and migraine. So we have not covered this topic before on Heads Up. It's very exciting. It's something we can do for ourselves at home. And um, so I thought we would go ahead and dive right in. Dr. Barrett, you often speak to your patients about, about vitamin supplementation, but you also, even when they first come to you, you sometimes measure certain vitamins in their blood. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. I think that's the optimal way to do it, really. Okay, that's very interesting because I don't know many people who do that. So I just wanted to throw it out there that it's something that you do. So um, let's just start by, let's start by talking about the different nutrients we're going to talk about. And um, then you can tell us which ones you measure in the blood as we go. Okay, sure. So let's, let's just start with magnesium. Why is magnesium important to us if we are a person who experiences migraine? So magnesium is important mainly because it's such a common nutrient deficiency in migraine. Uh, studies show that 80% of people with chronic migraine have low levels of magnesium within the brain and 100% of people who have migraine with aura. So if you were going to pick one thing to take, magnesium is a good bet. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And do you often measure... Um... Do you look for that in your patients? I do. And so here's part of the reason why. I feel like so many people have the experience with supplements that they hear about something, they take it for a while, they may or may not have a response, they're not really sure, and then they stop taking it. And I think it's a completely different experience if you have your levels checked, you know that you're low for whatever reasons having to do with genetics or environment or whatever it is, if you really know you need to take that, then people are much more likely to stick with it. Right. Um, so I think that's part of the reason for checking the, the blood level. And on that note, um, there's a basic kind of magnesium that's quite often done in, in medicine, mm -hmm. but that's not the one that we need to check for our purposes. So your nutrients are stored in a couple of different places in your body. Mm -hmm. And one is just in your bloodstream, the regular blood they draw, you know, for the blood test we're all familiar with. But you can also actually check the levels of all sorts of things, including magnesium, inside the cells in your body. And that's where it matters more. Mm -hmm. So if you were to go to your doctor and ask for a magnesium test, chances are it would be normal, unless they check the intracellular uh, magnesium level. So it's the amount of magnesium inside your red blood cells, the ones right. that carry oxygen to your muscles. That's where it needs to be checked. And that's where you're much more likely to pick up the deficiency. I think that's an important point because I do think some people have had their levels drawn, think it's normal, and they have not had their intracellular, intracellular levels checked. So thank you for making that point. So if we did want to supplement with magnesium, what type should we take and how much? So the, the best ones are the chelated magnesiums. My favorite is magnesium glycinate. So that's G-L-Y-C-I-N-A-T-E, if you want to go look it up. Mm -hmm. And you can take a dose anywhere between 400 and 500 milligrams at night. I do recommend it in the evening hours. It's not sedating exactly, but it's often used as a calming agent. Mm. Um, and in fact, when magnesium levels are low in the brain, it triggers the release of a neurotransmitter that is what we call excitatory. It right. amps your brain up. It makes your brain jittery when you're low on magnesium. Right. So taking magnesium can, for some people, create the experience of a, sort of a calm feeling. So I do generally recommend it at night. Okay. Are there any risks um, or reasons that we should be worried about getting too much mag magnesium? Nope. You can't get toxic on magnesium. So okay. you don't have to worry about that. 
Alrighty. And um, how long does it usually take? How long should people trial magnesium? Because you did mention that often with supplements, people will give up or give up too early. Is yeah. there a length of time you recommend trying magnesium? Yeah, you really got to give it three months before okay. you write it off. Um, a lot of people will see improvement quicker. Um, I will often see people getting improvement in the first couple of weeks. Um, but for a, a fair trial, you've really got to give it three months. Okay, that's good to know. So we're going to move on to B2. And can you explain to us why B2 is important for people who have migraine? Yeah, so B2 is one of the enzymes involved in energy production in our body, in our mitochondria. Mm -hmm. um, and so that is why we think it has something to do with migraine. Okay. Um, there have been lots of studies showing that some people benefit from vitamin B2 supplementation. And it is one of the uh, more commonly recommended supplements. I think the question though is, am I one of those people who is going to respond to B2 or not? Right. And again, that's a question that we can best answer by checking the blood levels. Okay, great. So I think it, an important question is because a lot of people just take a B complex type vitamin. Are they getting enough B2 if they're taking that B complex? Is that, or do we know? Probably not. Okay. So most B complexes will have about 30 milligrams of B2. Mm -hmm. And the dose that was used in the trials is 400 milligrams. Okay. Now, I think it's important to keep in mind that maybe part of the reason we see such variability with this is due to the MTHFR gene mutation, mm -hmm. which makes people process B vitamins differently. Okay. Um, so that could be one of the reasons why um, we see some variability in how people respond to B2. And if they do have that mutation, they're going to need much higher levels and the methylated version right. of the B. It's kind of the more activated form is basically what it is. And you can Google even just activated B2 and you can make sure you're getting the right stuff. The other name for B2, of course, is riboflavin. Mm -hmm. um, so you can Google that and then you'll make sure you end up with the right product. And in any case, is that the dose you recommend is about the, I'm sorry, you said 400? Yeah, it's 400 okay. milligrams total. Milligrams. Most people will split that up into 200 twice a day, Okay. Um, which obviously is a lot more than the 30 milligrams you usually find in a B complex. Okay. All right. So are there any side effects or risks to taking vitamin B2 that we should be concerned about? You know, you can get some diarrhea with this one. Same thing as with the mag. I find it's generally not as much of a problem with the B2 as it is with the magnesium. When people okay. start magnesium, that can really be dose limiting, meaning they have to start with a tiny little dose of maybe only 100 milligrams and work up slowly. Your body definitely gets used to it over time and that side effect goes away. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's, I would say, more prominent for magnesium than it is for B2, but it can happen with the Bs also. Okay. This is also interesting. I'm, I'm wondering, I'm hoping people are taking notes. Um, so how long do, is, is the three-month rule that you mentioned for magnesium, is that general for most of these nutrients, vitamins yeah. that we're going to talk about? Okay. So again, three months for B2, try it for at least for three months before expecting to see an effect. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the next nutrient we're going to talk about is a very interesting one when it comes to migraine, and we hear about it a lot. It's CoQ10. So can you please explain to us why this is important for people with migraine? Yeah, it's actually similar to uh, B2. It's one of the uh, cofactors that's involved in energy metabolism inside our cells. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the story is somewhat similar to B2 in that some people seem to respond, some people don't. Mm -hmm. The data isn't as strong as it is for things like magnesium, where it's absolutely clear that anybody who gets migraines should be on magnesium. Right. So CoQ10 isn't quite as clear. And CoQ10 is also harder to take. It's pretty pricey. I don't know how many of you out there have tried CoQ10, but it's a little more of a financial commitment right. and it's got to be taken three times a day. Right. So it's a little bit more of a hassle to take. Um, unfortunately for me in particular, my CoQ10 level is low if I don't take it. I don't know why, but that's how my body is. 
So I am one of those people who has to take CoQ10 and my headaches get better when I do. Um, and again, I think that that, and I never ever would have committed to that if I didn't see it on right. paper. Wow, I'm <laughs> low on this. And it's found in meat and I'm not a vegetarian. I right. eat plenty of meat. I should have fine CoQ10 levels, but for whatever reason about my particular genetic makeup, I don't. Um, so I think for this one in particular, it's really good to get the number checked before you start the supplementation, just because it increases your commitment to it. You know what I mean? Right. You know I'm really you glad you mentioned that because I do think part of the problem with uh, people who don't think these supplements help them, because um, I'll admit this has happened to me before, um, especially back when I was sicker than I am now for so many, uh, for so many years, I had daily migraine until I was 30. You have so many pills you're taking, right? And throw in some vitamin supplements that you're not sure if they're helping or not. And probably no one has ever told you that you need to trial it for three months, yeah. at least before, right? And so people yeah. tend to quit really early. Yeah. Um, so I think it's, I'm really glad we're getting this information out there. So are there any risks um, to, or can we get too much? Are there any risks and how much should we take if we want to take CoQ10? So the dose of CoQ10 is 100 milligrams three times a day. And it is another one of those things where it, you can't really get toxic on it. Okay. So you don't really need to worry about that one. Okay. Yeah. Um, and again, three months. Give it a shot for three months, correct? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And is there any reason that, uh, is it okay if people run out and start trying all the supplements we talk about at once today? Or should they try one at a time? You know, I prefer a more scientific approach to it of trying one at a time Okay. because then, you know, you okay. know, it's, it's enough time to really get, and, and I would recommend tracking it. You know, how many headache days a week are you having mm -hmm. and be, be a bit of a scientist with yourself about it. Where am I when I started? Where am I a month down the road? Where am I two months down the road, three months down the road so that you know, right. um, you know, whether or not you're getting benefit from it, because none of us wants to take anything we don't need, even if it's just a supplement. Right. Um, and so I would recommend doing one at a time and being fairly conscientious about your observations of whether or not it's really helping. I see people so many times though, who are desperate and they're like, I'll do anything and they take them all. And, and I get that. Um, but then if it does work, do you have to take all of them forever? Right. So and I, I know? think, I think there's a flip side to that. If you do get a side effect, if something does make you sick, you're, sick, you're not sure which one and you don't want to have to quit taking them all because what if one of them was going to help you? So, so there, there is an argument to doing one at a time if you, if you have the patience to do that. Yeah. Um, so the last supplement we're going to talk about is fish oil, which is a little different than all the other ones we talked about. And so why do you recommend fish oil to your patients? So honestly, I think fish oil is probably the next big thing in my brain. The data is not there yet. I'll be quite transparent about that. Some studies suggest a benefit, some don't. So the truth is we don't know right now. Mm -hmm. um, but the reason I like it is because of this. So I kind of think of the brain as um, if you're having a lot of migraines, I sort of think of it as having a broken brain. All right. Mm -hmm. And I like to make the analogy that if you have a broken brick wall, what do you need? You need More bricks to fix it. So if your brain is made of 60% omega-3 fatty acids, what do you need to fix it? You More need those omega-3s and that's fish oil or mm -hmm. flax or wild caught salmon. You know, there are a lot of different ways you can get those omega-3s, but I think you need more of the raw ingredients when that's over half of what's in here, you know, right. embedded into the cells in your brain, of course. Um, but it seems to me to make a lot of sense. Now, the other reason I think fish oil is going to end up being a big player is that it, the data that it is anti-inflammatory is quite strong. So we know it has a role in inflammation. Mm -hmm. And over the past five or 10 years, what have we learned about migraine? We've learned that there's a big inflammatory component for migraine as well. Right. All the new drugs work on the inflammatory uh, uh, marker, uh, cascade. So that means, you know, a Jovi, Mgality, um, Amavig, Urelvi, 
Neurotech, all of those drugs are working on CRGP, which is an important part in inflammation in migraine. So our understanding of how important inflammation is in migraine has really expanded. We know that fish oil is anti-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. We're just kind of at a point right now where the data is lacking to support it. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Well, I'm glad that we're at least talking about it. When you do recommend, <clears throat> excuse me, fish oil to your patients, how much do you recommend that they take? A thousand milligrams twice a day. Now, sometimes it can be tough to figure out how much you're on because there are usually two different numbers on the bottle. There's kind of a total, and then they break it out into the DHA and EPA, mm -hmm. which are the two main components. You just have to look at the total number. So okay. just when you, when you look at that bottle, just remember, you're looking at the big number on the bottle, not the two smaller numbers. It can be confusing to figure out how much you're on. Okay. All yeah. right. Um, so and is there any risk to taking too much fish oil? You know, I think it can cause uh, easy bruising, things like that. Okay. Um, doctors may have you stop it before a procedure. Make sure you let them know that you're on it. But other than that, there isn't. Okay. And any of these supplements should people discuss with their physician before they start taking them? Absolutely. Always okay. let your doctor know what you're on. Um, we all have, you know, drug checkers these days and we can run everything through and just make sure there are no interactions with anything you're on. Um, you know, you would not want to, uh, you know, miss that one, that one rare one in a million thing. So yeah, right. you let them know. Okay, great. Is there anything else you'd like to add to our discussion of supplements and migraine? Um, I think that's about it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was an awesome talk. I hope everyone got something out of it. Thank you so much, Dr. Barrett, for being with us today. And thank you everyone for joining us on this week's episode of Heads Up. Please join us again next week.